All right, in this video, we're going to look at goal M.2.2 in the ATIT study manual, and we're going to use some statistics to analyze information from tables, charts, and graphs. We're going to start things off with mean, median, and mode. Then we're going to look at some types of distributions that you may run across on the T's test, as well as some statistics classes that you may be taking later on in the future. And we'll look at uh, maybe where you've seen these online before, doing a quick search for a restaurant or a store, uh, here's some other, sa other shapes of some distributions that we will discuss as well, and then we'll finish things off with some increasing and decreasing trends using linear regression. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the mean, median, and mode. The mean, median, and mode, you've probably heard, probably heard of these in a math class before, but if you haven't, it's okay. Uh, the mean is the average. We want to find the average of our pieces of data. So in this example here, we have the ages of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. To find the average age, we add up all the ages and we divide by seven. The reason why we divide by seven here is because we have seven people, seven ages that we're looking at. And to do that, I mean, just real quick, just be careful. Make sure you add them all up first. So we're going to do 20 plus 18 uh, plus 19, then another 18, then a 20. I'm just adding up those ages over there in that column. So we add them all up, we get 132. So we add them all up, and then we want to divide by how many people we had or how many ages. There were seven different ages, and this is our average age, roughly 18 Point nine years depending on what place value you want to round to but as you can see that it that does match that right there now the median is going to be the middle number you want to be extra careful when you're finding the median you want to make sure your data is in either ascending order or, de or descending order it does not matter which one but you want to put them in numerical order so I'm just going to put them from smallest to biggest smallest to biggest is ascending notice by me sorting that list here now I have everything in order and since we have an odd number of pieces of data, remember how we had seven people? Seven's an odd number. Uh, that means this number right here, 19. Once you put them in order, see how 19 is right in the middle because we have three on this side of it and three on this side of it? 19 is going to be our median right there. But again, make sure you put your data in order. That is very important. And then the mode. Mode is the most. Out of all these pieces of data, which one occurs the most? The 20 occurs the most. Some things to point out though, now these values are getting ready to change because I'm gonna do a little bit of modification to this, but I want you to be careful when you're dealing with mode because sometimes you can have more than one mode. For example, suppose I come in here and I put another age. Suppose, suppose I ask another person, hey, how old are you? And they say, hey, I'm 18, okay? Now, I'm not really concerned with that value right there anymore because Excel does not compute the mode the same way. But now we have what's called a bimodal. It's bimodal because we have two uh, things that occur the most, the 20 and the 18. Now, bear in mind here, these are our new averages, if you will. Uh, the new average would be 18.75 and the new median would be 18.5. Well, you may wonder, okay, well, how is this median now 18.5? Well, now we have an even number of pieces of data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember how I added an extra age in there? Well, now when you take an, a median, when you want to find the median of some data where you have an even number of pieces of data, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to end up being right in between two numbers. So let me copy this on over here and let's have a look. And since they're already in order, they are in ascending order, right here is where our data is going to be divided in half. We're stuck between 18 and 19. And what you want to do here is you want to take those two numbers, add them together, 18 plus 19, and then you want to divide them by 2. Now, some of you may be like, all right, I already know what this is. It's going to be 18.5. And that's exactly right. Just be extra careful when you're typing this into the calculator to check it. You want to add them together first. So go ahead and get the sum, 37, and then divide it by 2. And notice we do get 18.5. Well, I hope that makes sense, though, because 18.5 is right smack in the middle of both of these data values. That's how you find a median given that your number of pieces of data is an even number. I hope that makes sense. So feel free to pause the video, come in and look at all of these. The mean, we just add them all up. 
but these are, these are shoe sizes, so what are we going to divide by here? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 pieces of data. So add them all up, divide by 12, you should end up with that value right there. The mode is going to be 12 because 12 occurs more than anything else. And then the median here, why is the median 10.5? Well, it looks like we're going to be right in between these two values. Again, because of that same concept, when you have an even number of data points, you'll fall in between two values. Add those two values together, divide it by two, you can get your median like that. So there's a big difference between having an odd number of pieces of data and an even number of pieces of data when it comes to finding the median. And again, don't forget this little formula over here. You always add them together and divide by two. Uh, because like I said, sometimes you may not have two values where it's real quick to sit there and say, oh yeah, well I know the value in between it. So I wanted to go ahead and throw that out there. Now, switching gears, getting away from mean, median, and mode, you have these other things that pop up in the study guide where they talk about distributions. Okay, so let's just look at this example here. Suppose we have some students in a college algebra classroom. We got 30 students in all, <clears throat> and we want to know how old they are, and we're going to get a frequency. So uh, students that are 17 years old in this college algebra class, there's three of them. That's what that frequency right there is. Just follow along with these little uh, boxes as I, as I move through them. So we got three people that are 17. We got eight people that are 18, 11 people that are 19, and so forth. So the oldest person in the class is 21, the youngest person in the class is 17. Well, look at how this frequency here is. This is a little uh, bar graph, if you will, where 17, remember how we said we had three people that were 17? Well, notice the frequency, if we look at our little chart over here, that the height of that bar is right between two and four, which shows that three. Uh, the 18 is right up there at 8. So we had 8 people who were 18 years old, as you can see right there. And all of these other ones are the exact same thing as well, or the exact same height in terms of 11 matches this, 6, and 2. Well, look at the shape of this thing. It, some people say, well, hey, it looks like a triangle. Well, what we call this is a symmetric distribution, and it has another name too. It's also called a normal distribution. Uh, just the shape does look symmetrical. Symmetrical oftentimes symbolizes what's called a normal distribution. You will notice that if you're looking in your study manual, a symmetric distribution may be one of the first things the study guide talks about. So let's look at another type of shape. This one definitely does not look symmetrical down the middle. This is an example of what we call skewed to the right. So let's, let's look at this histogram we have here. And what we're doing here, uh, uh, 73 people were sampled. I'll tell you what, is that, yeah, everything's good there. So 73 people were sampled. And what we have here is we asked them, okay, how much money do you make per year? What's your uh, yearly income? Well, 22 people said they make less than 29999 That should be less than or equal to, by the way. Um, I tell you what, I got a symbol up here, but for now, just less than or equal to 29,999. Nothing too crazy to be concerned with. That's just me being a little OCD with my math. So 22 people make less than $29,999. 31 people make somewhere between $30,000 and $49,999. And that's like our mode. That We don't know exactly how much these people made, but 31 people made somewhere in this range. And then as you notice, as the, the incomes go up, the values go down, and they go down considerably fast. Notice the shape this thing creates. It creates what's called a skewed distribution and is skewed to the right. So as we go off to the right, it drops off real quick, whereas when we started off, you know, our first piece up here, we had quite a few people who made, you know, in this little range here, less than or equal to $29,999. It peaks out, and then it drops off and it goes down to almost nothing, nobody in, in essence. So a skewed distribution, these are two examples. Well, let's look at some other shapes that we can have on various types of data. I wanna come back to this right here in a second, but here's some other shapes. Skewed to the right is the one that we see right here. Notice the bar graphs or histograms kinda of go down to the right. Uh, skewed left would be a similar shape, but it goes in the opposite direction. Symmetrical, that is this one like we had over here, often referred to as a normal distribution. We have a uniform distribution. That's where basically every single value that we look at, whether it be ages or incomes or anything, they pretty much have, they don't have to be perfectly the same, 
but it's uh, they, they all occur around the same number. The frequency is going to be roughly the same for all of them. Bimodal, don't worry about too much about it being bimodal and symmetrical. What I do want to refer to is the fact that it's bimodal. We have two peaks. And remember, mode means what occurs the most. So we have two things that peak out. That's a bimodal distribution. And don't even worry about that one. That was just another one there that I copied over from Google Images. But anyway, you know, this one right here, a bimodal. You may say, okay, when can we have two modes? That's what this example right here is for. So doing a Google search for Olive Garden or any store that you've looked for before and you're wondering when are they going to be open or you might be saying, okay, I wonder if they're busy right now. Look at the distribution here. The higher this bar graph is or the higher this histogram, whatever you want to call this, the higher it is, the more people that are typically going to be at Olive Garden. Well, notice Olive Garden opened at 11, closes at 10. So they open at 11 and it peaks out. And then that's around lunchtime. Then it kind of dies off a little bit. This is like mid-afternoon when nobody's really eating. But then when it comes time for supper, it peaks again. So this is an example pulled directly from Google of a bimodal. And it does, in fact, the Olive Garden does, in fact, look kind of symmetrical too. But I don't care about the symmetrical and bimodal at the same time. But notice we do have two peaks. And that's exactly what we have back here at the Olive Garden. So giving you some proper names to these shapes, whether it be skewed right, skewed left, symmetrical, bimodal, you'll see all of those covered in the ATIT study manual. And then the last thing we want to talk about here is increasing and decreasing trends. This is when you look at two variables instead of one. What do I mean by variables? Well, going back to this example right here, this was a single variable. We had ages. That was a single variable shoe size well sometimes you may have two variables and the two variables you want to compare them so let me see here comparing weight in kilograms to the height one would think and in more more times than none the more something weighs or the more somebody weighs probably the taller they are that's not always the case but typically as weight goes up height goes up and as you can see in the graph that's exactly what's happening down here, like a weight of 40 kilograms, they weigh uh, below, or a weight of 40 kilograms, that person has a height of less than 160 centimeters. What does this person weigh up here? How much do they weigh? This person right here. They weigh roughly 100 kilograms, and about how tall they are, or how tall are they? They are somewhere like 190-ish, a little bit more than 190 centimeters. Uh, reading this graph and making sure you pay attention to your scales. But the point I'm trying to make here is this. As weight goes up, the height goes up in mo in more times than none. What do, we, what do we call this? We call this a positive uh, correlation, or we can call it a positive trend. As one thing goes up, something else goes up, or you could say as one thing goes down, something else goes down. Because as weight goes down, notice the height typically goes down. That's that line of best fit that we have going through there. This can help you predict future values or predict, in this case, weights or heights based on this trend, this correlation that we have between these two variables. And then this last piece down here, uh, this is like a video game kind of thing where like a video game tournament and the damage dealt is how much maybe somebody, uh, people playing Call of Duty or Halo, the, the more damage somebody deals to another player in terms of like a shooting game or boxing game or whatever, probably they received less damage. They probably did more damage than what they received. So as the damage dealt, when it's really high, when this person got like 5,000 points or whatever, notice the damage they received was only 50. They didn't, they didn't get hurt too much, if you will. But notice as the damage received goes up. So this person over here, they got shot a lot, but the damage they dealt out was not as much. So it's an example of a negative thing. As one thing goes up, as the damage received goes up, the damage dealt goes down. Now maybe that's not the best example. Again, I just grabbed this off of Google Images real quick, but there's other things that you can think about too that have a negative correlation. Uh, for example, the heavier a vehicle is, the lower its um, mileage or the lower its gas mileage in miles per gallon. 
that, that does that make sense? As the weight goes up, the miles per gallon that it gets would go down. Yeah, because it's going to take more gas to actually get that heavier vehicle moving. This is an example of a negative correlation or a negative trend. Um, another example of a negative trend, probably, uh, let's see, the more time you spend watching TV the night before an exam, the lower your grade on the exam will be. That might not be the case, but probably if, you're, if you took enough data and you ask students, hey, how much TV did you watch last night before you took your exam? They tell you that, and is the more time they spent watching TV, probably the lower their grades are going to be. Again, an example of a negative trend, a negative correlation, because as one thing goes up, something else goes down. But uh, yeah, there you have it. You know, uh, examples of distributions, shapes of distributions. Um, we also spent some time in Excel, you know, looking at these things as well, looking at some real data, some real graphs and stuff, and, and interpreting these things. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.